Hey folks, Fernando doing our video for the Modern Survivalist and this video is going to be a little bit longer but it's one of those important ones that I suggest you stick around for because you're going to be learning something that is both cool and quite useful really if it ever comes down to this where you have to apply this knowledge to real world situations and we're going to be learning to tell the difference between real silver and fake counterfeit silver coins this works also for gold as well if you know what you're working with the coins that you have at hand and the um, information you should know about them so why is this a big deal well Learning to tell counterfeits from the real deal has been something that I've applied myself in Argentina during the crisis and mostly I was using it for counterfeit bills with paper currency with pesos and US dollars. There was a ton of them floating around that were just you know counterfeit money and you had to know what you were what you were giving and exchanging because if not you would be getting ripped off all the time and I even had in my keychain I kept a UV light which helped in in telling some of the markings in some of the bills with that UV light it was pretty fast but also knowing the money what to look for to know if it's counterfeit or not now when there's something like a, an, an economic collapse, a serious financial crisis or um, some uh, large-scale economic problem in a country, think of the economic collapse in Argentina uh, where the peso lost you know, uh, th uh, almost uh, three-fourths of its value and um, uh, think of Venezuela right now. So it's not just one specific incident. Uh, Venezuela um, in pretty much all of these countries where things have gone very wrong economically and sometimes they happen very fast and in Venezuela for example it's a country that has some of the best natural resources it's a oil rich country Venezuela is one of the countries that has the most amount of oil in the world and it's a country that's naturally rich in terms of land resources climate they should be able to grow anything yet the minimum wage is a dollar a month and right now in Venezuela there's people diving literally into the gutter looking for a little bit of gold or silver. Just a little earring of silver makes that those people's day because they can afford a lot of food, which their economy, they have one, uh, one million percent inflation per year. In Argentina, the business of, of uh, precious metals went to 500 percent because of the crisis. And there's not a prepper community or much of a prepper culture in Argentina, but you'd see people selling maybe their gold wedding rings um, to you know put food on the table. That happened a lot. So m maybe people didn't have a few gold, uh, gold or silver eagles, but they had some um, jewelry from the family, some heirloom jewelry. They would sell that so as to. Um, you know get by so within this context and with that introduction let's get to it there's basically five simple ways that you can apply, you can use to tell if this again if something happens and then you end up exchanging these uh, that works only as long as you're getting real actual silver and gold because if not you know there's what's the point to it so five is simple methods that I use and I'm gonna be demonstrating right now the origin the ring, the sound test, the, the ping test, the ring that the metal does when strike, uh, magnetic, size, and weight. There's also using the acid test with a little drop of acid that some people don't like as much because it leaves a mark and may ruin the value uh, numismatically speaking or just people don't want to have tarnish silver and such. Um, there's a, uh, there are electrical testers. I'm going to be leaving the link below if you want to check these out. These are available in Amazon. And finally details, which is what serious numismatic experts will do to a coin, especially coins worth hundreds, thousands of dollars. They're, they're going to be doing all this and keeping all that in mind, of course, but the real deal counterfeits that are almost perfect copies. Looking with a with that, looking at it with a magnifying glass, with a jeweler's glass, the small strike details of um, of the coin and some of the reference they have from similar coins is what's going to be telling them if it's a counterfeit or not. But that's on another level, more mostly numismatics. We're mostly interested in learning if we have a real silver coin or gold coin or not. So number one would be origin, and right away I'm going to be telling you that there's one coin here that is a fake one coin here that's a counterfeit because of this 
Number one point, because I bought it on, a, on eBay for one dollar and it was shipped from China. As you probably understand, no coin, no silver coin sells for one dollar, let alone on eBay and being shipped from China. You pretty much know it's a counterfeit coin. So I'm going to be, I have a few uh, coins from other countries, we're, we're going to be sticking mostly to U.S. coins. Just so, just for reference to that just to have that, uh, an idea, you have a couple Morgans here, you have a Kennedy half, you have a, a Swiss a silver coin, this is a 5 franc coin. Interestingly enough, today it's the exact same form of, of coin. It looks exactly the same, but it's no longer a silver content. But it's still in circulation today. These 5 francs, about $5 I believe it is, a old um, French junk silver coin. Uh, this is 5 francs, also 90% silver. This is a Spanish, the last Spanish silver coin minted in 1966. This is 80% silver, which is in Spain, it's the, the, the silver law says that's that content that it has. Now, we're going to be looking at these three and we're going to be using this method. So, I already know of one of them that is a uh, fake. Now, the origin thing. Uh, I mean, where did you get it from? Did you get it from a coin dealership that is trusted? There's a good chance that it's original. Warning, it's not a 100% reassurance. You just have a better idea that probably it's not a counterfeit. If you got it from a rugged looking ex-cop wielding a shotgun in Barter Town, you may be a little bit more distrusting, you know? But um, the origin where you get it from, I buy from eBay quite often. And I buy from eBay from dealers that have 99.9% .9 positive reviews and over a thousand sales. If Even if it has that, I'm going to be checking the negatives and if the, there's the slightest mention of counterfeit coins or fake coins, I'm not buying from them. I assume somewhat safely that if someone has over a thousand sales and a uh, hundred uh, positive reviews, a hundred percent positive reviews, they're not going to be ruining that selling some junk silver, uh, some, uh, sorry, some counterfeit or fake coins. No one's going to be ruining willingly their reputation doing that. Now, they may still make a mistake, especially with junk silver that is often overlooked. There are counterfeits, junk silver halves and junk silver quarters that have no numismatic value. They are floating around as junk silver quarters and they're actually fake. They're not silver. Number two would be the ring test. These are all pretty fast. But the ring test is the sound that it makes when, when you hit it, when you ping that coin, and it makes a very specific sound. Silver sounds like a long, a sweet silver bell sound. Let me give you, give you a listen so as to see if you check the difference, all right? This is also a silver coin, so slightly bigger, thicker, but you see how it sounds like a silver bell. I'm going to be checking our other big coin here, our Morgan silver, Morgan silver dollar. Listen. Okay, dropped it there. You see how this one sounds different? It's not as sweet, it's not as long sounding, doesn't last as long, the vibration, and it's much thinner, weaker sound. This is our fake coin. That sound does not correspond with a silver coin. Okay, this is the fake because of that steel sound that it makes. It's not making the silver sound that it should. Besides, this is the one that I bought from China for one buck, and I know. Now, if you look at the details, you may be fooled by it because it's really not that bad. I have a, a real one here, 1880 and an 1888 fake one that I bought specifically for this, this video and you may be fooled by it. Now, there's other small differences, but for someone that is not knowledgeable, that hasn't seen this video and look, knows what to look for, maybe you may be tricked. One common um, flaw that some of these fakes have is that when you flip the real one, it's the eagle is looking in the right direction. Now when you flip the, the fake one, the eagle is upside down. They, they messed that up. But now with these ones, they fixed that and it's facing on the exact same direction that it should, like the real one. Okay, so 
that's not just one way uh, of knowing. I mean, if you see that it's upside down, then of course it's fake, but if not, it, it may still be a counterfeit. Number three is magnetic, especially with some of these uh, junk silver quarters that I've seen that are not magnetic. But it passes the magnet. This is not a very strong magnet, but it should have some attraction if it's if it's magnetic. Nothing. There's no magnetic attraction here. Of course, silver is not magnetic, so that's the way it should be. But some of these counterfeits, they are magnetic, and that tells you it's a, a quick way of screening some of the junk silver floating around. If it if it's magnetic, you already know that's not the real deal. Now number four, size, measuring the coin. Now here there's, there's a little bit of a warning. You have, you have to know what you're dealing with. So I have a Morgan here and it should be weighing 26.73 grams, measuring 38.1 millimeters. I'm gonna be measuring it, okay. The real one, about spot on, okay. Our fake is 37. 37 almost uh, 37.9 I want to go say so it's slightly smaller but if you look at it from compared both of these it's not really all that obvious it's slightly smaller but not very much you may be easily tricked if you have a bag full of these mixed with some real ones or a few fake ones floating around or if you do not know this kind of information now in terms of, of thickness our counterfeit coin is almost three millimeters flat so three millimeters is a little bit thicker than it should be which should be 2.4 millimeters but the rim of the of a morgan coin may vary there's quite a bit of variation usually how wide it is is a little bit more the margin error is smaller but for example here it's a little bit over 2.4 millimeters more like 2.7 uh, but the rim can have sand variation, especially when it's circulated like this one and the bumps that they have, and especially because by law, the thing that had to be perfectly accurate was the weight. And for mechanical reasons, how the coin is created, how wide it is, tends to be a little bit more accurate. The rim, there's usually a little bit more variation. There's real coins, real Morgan coins that have 2.8, something like that. It is still very much possible. So. Keep it in mind, but know that it's not always perfect. And finally, we're going to be looking at how much the coin weighs. Uh, there's some fakes out there that are just very much off, but there's some very good ones as well. Let's take a, a look here at what we have. So we turn it on, and put a little plastic on top. And take away that and we're gonna be weighting our real Morgan coin now it should be weighting 26.73 grams of weight and it's 26.46 26.46.47 and it should be weighting 26.73 that's well within the weight lost because of where right if it was in mint condition it should be weighting pretty much exactly that now this coin is a little bit worn, it's circulated, and it has lot of, lost a little bit of, of silver, and that's quite realistic. Now with this other one that I have here, it seems to be in about the same sort of, of wear, correct? Let's see how much this one weighs. And it's 24.32, 24.33 grams of weight. It's way below. There's no way that much weight difference can be attributed to the wear on the coin. That's simply because it's not silver. But again, if you do not know this kind of information and you're told, well, you know, it's very much worn, it may have lost a couple grams, no. There's no, no way that kind of wear means that kind of weight loss. There's also a you know, little difference like this sparkle that it has. It's more of a steel chrome looking sparkle that it has in the surface and this fake toning is very common of those uh, Chinese fakes floating around that's kind of the th of things I know because I've been looking at, at these quite a bit and know what a real one should be looking like so guys that's the information you should have so as to detect real coins and it also applies using the right information for um, 
gold ones as well. Gold also has a very distinctive ring to it that is not as easily imitated. Guys, that's going to be all for now. Remember to subscribe, hit that notification bell button because if not, you're not going to be getting any future videos. Take care, have a great day, see you on our next video.